Visionaries, what's going on? Jason Osborne, JL Vision, and today we're talking camera settings for better portraits. Let's go. Before I get into everything, I just want to say thanks for coming back and watching another one of my videos. And if this is your first time to the channel, well, I'm a professional photographer based out of Houston, Texas, and I do appreciate you stopping by and watching this video. Please hit that subscribe button if you like photography, vlogs, photography tips, editing. I bring it all here on this channel. And don't forget to hit the like button because it does help my videos do better. Now let's get right into the settings that you should be using so you could take better portraits. Now all these settings are widely available across all the major camera brands, so you shouldn't have a problem being able to find it in your camera. Just make sure you hit Google and research it for your own camera brand so that you're not stuck trying to copy everything that you see in the video. The first setting that you should definitely have activated in your camera is the framing grid. So why use the framing grid? Well, the framing grid is gonna allow you to compose and make sure that you level your shot while you're shooting. It's gonna put a light grid over your viewfinder and or over your live view screen so that you can be able to see exactly how your shot is leveling up and being composed. Now, while you can crop and compose in post, it's always important to try to get it as right as possible in camera. So while doing this, the framing grid is gonna allow you to be able to frame your shot and also compose your shot within the framing grid so that you know that you have a level shot going forward. This is gonna give you a better portrait right out the gate because it's gonna be composed perfectly and also level, which is gonna save you a lot of time in post and it's gonna be able to help you get editing done faster. The second setting you should definitely focus on for better portraits is the drive mode. Now, what's the drive mode? Well, it's simply semi-automatic or fully automatic when you're shooting. When you press and hold the shutter, does it continue to take pictures or does it click once and then wait for you to take another press of the shutter? So you definitely wanna make sure that the single shot setting is activated in the drive mode in your camera. Camera. This means that when you click the shutter, it's only gonna take one shot and then it's gonna wait for you to press it again before it takes another shot. If you hold down the shutter, nothing is gonna happen after the first shot is taken. For this, this is gonna allow you to one, avoid the dreaded spray and pray. Sometimes when you're shooting a portrait session, you can just hold down the shutter and you take a million shots and then when you upload the shots from your memory card when you get home, you realize that you have a lot more work ahead of you because you have to go through all of those now. When you have the one shot or the single shot, activated in your camera, that's gonna make you slow down. It's also gonna make you more selective of the shots that you take. And since the camera's not working hard to take a million shots at once, you're gonna get more accurate and sharper shots as well which is gonna improve the quality of your portraits going forward. When it comes to this setting, it's definitely quality over quantity. The third setting I'm gonna be talking about is the autofocus setting for your camera. Now for portraits, among all of the autofocus settings that you might have, single point autofocus is definitely the one I recommend. This is gonna allow you to have the finest and single point autofocus point in your camera body, and you're gonna be able to adjust that by moving it around and putting it on your subject's face. This is gonna give you sharper portraits, it's gonna to lead to less missed shots. Other focus modes might use multiple different focus points in the camera, and it can allow for the camera to can kind of get confused as far as what it should be focusing on. Sometimes you might have the camera pointed at your model or your subject, but then the background is in focus and they're totally blurry. That's because the camera picked other autofocus points to use instead of the ones that were directly on your model. When you use single point, you're pretty much eliminating all the other focus points and you're using that one, and then you're manually placing it exactly where you wanna focus. Now, other updated cameras, such as mirrorless cameras, they have single point autofocus that does it automatically. It'll lock onto the model's eye and you won't have to worry about it. Also, newer camera bodies, they might have two different types of single point. They might have regular single point and then they might have spot single point. Spot single point is a finer tuned uh, single point autofocus than you might see in a regular camera body. Not only is it gonna use that single autofocus point that you're putting over your model, but then it's gonna have a focus point within that, which is pretty much gonna guarantee you a non-miss shot. I would definitely use that one if it's available in your camera body, but single point autofocus will definitely get the job done as well. Try to avoid the other ones that have multiple focus points that pop up because they can once again confuse your camera on what you actually wanna be focused on. The fourth setting I'm gonna be talking about is the metering mode for your camera. 
Now for portraits, there's no doubt that spot metering is the best one to use. Spot metering is very helpful because instead of reading the entire scene for light, it's gonna only focus on the spot that's on your subject. Meaning instead of seeing the whole entire scene of all the light that's being brought into the camera, it's only gonna really focus on where your focus point is, which is that single spot, which is most likely always gonna be on your subject or model. That's gonna make sure that your model's face and subject is always gonna be exposed perfectly. And then the rest of the scene, you can adjust for either by increasing your ISO or your shutter speed or your aperture. Having a great exposure is also the key to having a great portrait because light is so important when it comes to portraits. And this is gonna help you, especially during outdoor portraits when you might have a very bright background or you know your shadows of your subject might be a little darker. Being able to read that light specifically that's on your model instead of the entire scene is gonna help improve your portraits overall. Bonus tip time. Now, I do have a bonus tip, a bonus setting, and you don't always have to use this, but if you are an outdoor photographer or if you are a natural light photographer, if you are a wedding photographer, or if you like that light and airy style, this setting is definitely a must have, and I think that you should definitely use it if you wanna help improve your portrait. Portraits, and that is the highlight alert setting. All right, so what is the highlight alert? Well, it's basically an alert that's gonna let you know when you've blown out a portion of your shot. Meaning, any time that you take a shot that's super overexposed, very bright, blown out, that part of the image, when you look back at it in playback in your camera, is gonna start blinking. And that's gonna let you know, hey, this part of the image right here, is definitely blown out. You're not gonna get this back in post. You're not gonna be able to save this part. So you might wanna take it again. There have been plenty of times where I've taken a bride outdoors to do her uh, wedding portraits. And even though her face was completely exposed perfectly, her dress was completely blown out. I was able to know this immediately because all the white in her dress was blinking during the playback. That's very important to have. Then I would just redo the shot either with an increased shutter speed or I increased my aperture and then I was able to expose everything properly. Having this is gonna allow you to save time and it can save a shot or two in post because once it's blown out, you're not gonna get any of that detail back. Same thing with the photographers who like to shoot the light and airy style. Light and airy is a basic combination of shooting a little overexposed and then doing the rest in editing. Now you wanna make sure that you save as much detail as possible and the best light and airy style allows you to get that bright and airy look without overexposing some of the parts. Having the highlight alert activated on your camera is definitely gonna help you achieve that because it might look good when you look back at it uh, in your viewfinder, but then if you don't see that blinking, at least you know that everything is well exposed and you're gonna have all that detail when you go to edit it in post. If you start seeing things blinking, then you might wanna, like I said, increase your shutter speed or your aperture so that you can go ahead and have a well exposure to edit when you get home from the shoot. So there you have it, visionaries, all right? You've got your framing grid, you've got single point autofocus, you've got single shot in the drive mode, and you've got spot metering. And for the bonus, you have highlight alert. I guarantee if you activate or use these settings for your camera, you're gonna have better portraits overall and it's gonna make an easier time in editing and post. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Everything helps for the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. This is Jason Osborne, peace.